Welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I help private practice owners align their business back with their soul's calling, with their big vision and with their soul's purpose. Unlike other private practice coaches, I've traveled the world in search of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, education and information so that you can have the transformation that your soul desires and needs so that you can up-level your business. How much fun is this? I love it so much. Guys, if you're not already a member of the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group, please check out the show notes. I would love for you to be there. In the meantime, thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Happy Saturday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast. It's so great to see you again. Thank you very much for pushing play on another episode and welcome to all of the new subscribers. Okay, so today I want to talk with you about something, a topic that came up in the ACPPO. It's the online group for Australian counsellors in private practice. And uh, it's all about discovery calls. And uh, this is such a great topic because I think it's been largely unaddressed in our industry and there's a lot of confusion around it. So I just want to spend a little bit of time this morning unpacking that for you. Uh, And I want to give you my take on this. Now, of course, some people will agree, some people will disagree, and that's absolutely fine. Like I think discussion is always so important. It's how we learn and grow. But I just want to put, I guess, my thoughts out there and see what you think. But basically, uh, you know, if you don't know, a discovery call is a call that you have with a potential client. So they will um, get in touch with you. Let's say you're advertising that you have spaces available. And one of the things that you advertise is a discovery call. Now, most of the time, a discovery call is a free call that you have with a client. It can often go be anywhere from like 10 or 15 minutes right up to 45. The industry standard is about half an hour. Um, and it's time where um, you get to, you know, unpack things with a client with the goal being to see if you're a great fit for each other. So some counsellors do them and some counsellors don't. Now, I think... There's a lot of confusion about if you should and if you shouldn't and all of that sort of stuff. So it's important to go back to the origins of a discovery call. So discovery calls began in MLM. So MLM is multi-level marketing. So it's a sales tactic and it's designed from the practitioner's side to support someone in making a decision about a big investment. So we normally see um, with MLM, with multi-level marketing, um, you know, they're usually encouraging people to buy their products like doTERRA oils is an MLM. So, you know, you'll speak to someone, you'll have a discovery call to see if it's fine for you to sell doTERRA and if you align with the doTERRA brand and all of this sort of stuff. And then they're going to like send you a pack of little oils and then you're going to start contacting your family and friends and selling them to family and friends. And you're going to have discovery calls with your family and friends and try and get them to sell, you know, underneath you. And then, you know, a percentage of what they sell comes to you. And this is like the whole multi-level marketing. So that's the history of a discovery call. And I think it's important that as counsellors, you're aware of that because I also understand how uncomfortable many of you are with selling, yet you're offering something that comes from selling and comes from selling in a way that's out of integrity with you. So I think it's really important that you understand the basis of a discovery call because it's possible that your client is familiar with what a discovery call is and they might assume 
that this is something to do with MLM, that you're going to try and sell them something, that you're going to try and get them to get their friends to, to sell your stuff, whether it's your counseling or, you know, all this other stuff. So it could actually be stopping people from booking calls with you. I know personally, when I was looking for my counselor, I didn't go to anybody that was offering a discovery call because I know what a discovery call is all about. And so I did not want to be sold to. So keep in mind, you have to know what a discovery call is before you do it. And then you have to think, is it aligned for me to do one? Uh, The other thing that uh, discovery calls are used for is in the coaching industry. So if you haven't had any qualifications or training in the coaching industry, then you probably haven't been trained in what a discovery call is, which would mean you're winging it. You're assuming that you know what you're doing, but you probably don't. And that might be why you're not getting the results that you want as well. But when we do education and qualifications in training, as you know, I've got five qualifications in coaching. And one of the things that you do learn about is the value and the importance of having that conversation with a client. But here's the thing, in coaching, it's high ticket, right? So high ticket means it's going to cost a lot of money. Now, for that reason, a discovery call absolutely has a place because when the payment some people call it an investment, but when whatever the fee is that you're charging, whatever the outlay is for your client, um, whatever language you want to use, it's going to be huge to them. That's very different to counseling, right? Counseling is usually less than 200 bucks an hour, right? Um, but if somebody's enrolling in a coaching program or some kind of a high ticket program, they absolutely need to have a conversation with you prior to making that investment, prior to spending that amount of money for the simple fact that it's a lot of money. So you have to be available to answer any questions that they have so that they can see if it's a right fit for them, if they're going to get return on their investment and all of that sort of stuff. So again, a discovery call doesn't fit in a counseling model. It doesn't fit in a counseling industry. There is no place for it in the counseling industry. So why is it then that counseling uh, seems to have adopted this idea of, you know, doing a discovery call? Well, my view, and I don't know this because I haven't researched it well enough, but my sense uh, is that counseling, unlike some other professions, simply hasn't had the guidelines around what to do and how to do it uh, with the business types of things. So we see membership bodies talking about, well, you've got to have this qualification and you need to have this diploma or this master's and things like that. But nobody's actually saying to counsellors, hey, here's the guideline on how you book somebody in. And I think that's the difference. Uh We do have codes of ethics, uh, all of that sort of stuff, but nobody's actually given the counselling industry a set of guidelines around this is how you book a client, this is how you, um, you know, have that conversation with a client. So I want to tell you a little bit about my experience working as a psychologist for over 20 years. So psychology is a profession, right? Just like a physio, Cairo, all of that sort of stuff. I don't believe counselling is yet perceived to be a profession um, because of the muddiness and the confusion and everyone's doing things their own way. There's no sort of clear guidelines. But I'm on a mission to help counsellors by hook or by crook be raised to the level of being seen as equals with psychologists and social workers and, and everybody else. But in order to do that, we have to start with ourselves. And that means putting some kind of order, some kind of guideline around how we're going to do these calls. But anyway, in psychology, uh, as I said, which is a profession, you don't do discovery calls. It's not a thing. I don't do a discovery call with my psychologist. I don't do a discovery call with my dentist. I don't do a discovery call for half an hour with my Cairo. Um, You just don't do it. I don't do a discovery call with a psychiatrist. Um, People don't do these things when they're engaging the help of professionals. 
I want you to be feeling and embodying the version of you that is a professional and that is seen by the community as a professional and it is seen by the you know health and well-being community as professional and so I would ask you to stop doing these calls uh, for the simple fact that they're associated with multi-level marketing and selling and coaching they're not uh, something that health and well-being professionals do okay so I think we need to clean that up a little bit it's also a problem with our industry because of the nature of the clientele that we work with. For example, um, we're working with clients who are vulnerable, right? They're, they're, most of us are counselling around mental health, right? Not all of us are. I know other people are doing other types of counselling, but mostly we're working with vulnerable people with mental health conditions, with mental health symptoms, with mental health implications, right, that they're struggling with. And as a result of that, I don't feel it's helpful for counsellors to be providing half hour, 45 minute free discovery calls and then the client just goes away from that having received something and then they the next day they go and ring somebody else and have a discovery call with that person and then another day they go and have a discovery call with another person. I feel that's problematic for our industry because it doesn't sit in integrity with what we are about, which is helping people. And I feel like it's a disservice to clients because although they're not our clients yet because they haven't uh, started working with us, but if clients can start ringing different therapists and getting half hour, 45 minutes on the, on the phone with different therapists, and we know that we all have different approaches and different ways of working and different ways of supporting clients, I think we're doing a disservice to our clients because we're probably just, you know, running the risk of confusing them or making them worse instead of making them better. I think this is especially true when people don't know what to say in those discovery calls. And I hear it all the time. People will say to me, oh, yeah, I had a discovery call with, you know, three clients this week and that all went really well and she was so happy at the end and he was so happy at the end and they were so happy at the end and, um, oh, they said it was the best call ever and da-da-da-da-da and they didn't book in. They, they said that they'll think about it and everything and they haven't booked in. And then when we unpack that together, what happens is the counsellor's been doing counselling on the phone and basically given a free counselling session because they don't know, they haven't been trained in what a discovery call is. They don't know how to run that inquiry call properly and they default to providing free therapy on, on the phone and then hoping that the client's going to book in and it doesn't happen. So I guess, you know, my advice to you is don't do them because I just believe if we want to be seen as being health professionals in our industry uh, we want to let go of using techniques that aren't born within our industry um, a coaching technique is going to work for for coaching clients who are well <laughs> who want who are goal focused and want to achieve stuff and have got money to spend on their goal achievement they don't fit within discovery calls don't fit within our model and within our industry uh Usually what would happen in social work or psychology or even with your doctor is you're just going to pick up the phone. Client's just going to pick up the phone and book in and maybe they're going to have a talk with admin about some general stuff like your fee and a rebate and your availability and the hours and all of that sort of stuff. But you don't need to do these calls and I would encourage you to let them go because, as I said, it, it's in a way – incongruent with how our profession wants to be seen and it's incongruent with how we want to be seen as health professionals so I would stop doing them um, I would stop offering them I would stop saying free call this free call that um, 
I just wouldn't do them. Save them for your high level offers. Like for example, if you're running an anxiety program or if you're running a big EAP workshop or something like that, of course, go for it. And um, that's different though than the one-to-one with vulnerable clients. I I wouldn't be doing them there. Okay. Um, Yeah, I've just made some notes. I'm just quickly going over my notes. Oh yeah, the other thing too is you don't have time as a health professional to be, you know, having half hour conversations with people that go nowhere because you don't know what you're doing or because you've provided them with counseling or because the client's not invested in taking action that they need to take. So I wouldn't bother doing them. If you need help answering questions, you can absolutely answer quick questions, but I wouldn't be advertising free calls anymore. I would take that off your website. Um, If you want, go and have a look at a few psychology websites and you'll see they don't offer free calls. Have a look at social work websites. You'll see they don't offer free calls. It's not a thing. So, you know, your, your doctor doesn't offer a free half hour consult before you go and meet with them. I just want you to really start to think about our role as professionals and before you do a discovery call I think you have to really look at where does it come from what's my goal here and if your goal is to get somebody booked in well that's a sales call and we're not in the business of selling unless you've got a big offer or a big program as I said before so uh, if you're doing them I would rethink them um if you're doing them and they're working for you and it feels aligned for you, uh, again, I would probably say if you're with me and and want to help us be seen as equals in the professional community, I would encourage you to stop advertising that you do them. Um, yeah, if you wanted to market them on your website, I wouldn't say free call. I would just say to find out more, give us a call on this number. And then have a conversation with somebody. Um, that would probably be the most helpful way to go about it. So I guess your next steps moving forward would be really think about how you want counsellors to be seen in the grand scheme of things by our, you know, health and wellbeing peers. And think about how you want us to be seen by the community. If you have never been trained in doing a discovery call, stop doing them because there's a really good chance that you're going about them the wrong way. Because as I said, discovery calls are traditionally for other industries, not for people who are mentally unwell and and vulnerable. Um, And I, I want you to be able to create a private practice that feels aligned and that feels in integrity for you. Okay, if you have any questions about this, do let me know. Uh, I can put together uh, some little guidelines for you so that if you are advertising free discovery calls, if you are spending time each week, you know, for free, uh, you know, trying to speak to people and and get bookings, let me put together um, some guidelines for you, just like a little checklist of what to say and how to say it uh, so that it's congruent with your integrity and so that's congruent with our codes of ethics. Um, And so we're not putting clients um, at risk by getting them to, you know, either shop around by providing free therapy on the phone or by getting them to book in for a service that may not be the right service for them, okay? So I think this is a really important step for us to be taking. Um, It will require some transition, and I know that change is hard, right? (laughs) I'm someone who loves change. I'm what they call an early adapter, like as soon as the, the newest thing comes out, I'm all over it, but I understand that. I'm in the minority here. Most people won't care about what I'm saying, but some people will be totally on board with me and other people will say, well, I'm still going to do them and you can't tell me what to do and they work for me and I've got a method. That's fine. I guess I just want to be completely transparent with you and say my big goal is to raise us up, raise up our profile um, 
because I think it's so important that when we're seen as professionals, uh, we will be able to help more people and get more people through treatment and get them feeling well again. And I think we all share that common goal. So thank you so, so much for listening. Um, You know, this whole idea of how do we connect with clients initially and, and what do we share with them and stuff like that. This is something that we do cover off in Clients on Demand, which is going so, so well, by the way. I have to say, um, some people have said some amazing things this week. Like uh, somebody said, I never thought I'd say this, but I love marketing. <laughs> and that was so good. And then um, somebody else had two inquiries for her business and that was really good and somebody else had uh, someone book in a session and oh look they're all just doing so well and I can't wait for you to hear more about their journeys in the program as I go through that they, they've just hit uh, week four so we're at the midway point now of the eight-week program so I'm super excited to see all their feedback and to see how they're all going and yeah I just oh I'm so proud of them and I'm so happy for them. It's so nice to see them filling diaries. Uh, Yeah, so stay tuned because I do want to share if they'll give me permission. I haven't checked yet, but uh, toward the end of the program, I want to bring some of them on for a little case study maybe. Uh, or if they're a bit shy and they don't want to come on, maybe I can whip up a case study and I can read it out to you so you can see what it was like for them um, from where they've gone to where they are. And yeah, it's going to be so much fun. I love it so much. Um, And they're doing it all without discovery calls. (laughs) So anyway, I hope that you have a really beautiful Saturday. Thank you so much for listening to another episode. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast today. If you're looking for clarity, if you need help with branding, your processes and bringing everything into alignment with your soul's purpose for your private practice, head to the show notes and click the link for more information about the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group. You are going to love it. I can't wait to see you in there. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.